Hi, welcome back to the program. With us now, Dr. Clarence Green. We began a discussion a couple of weeks ago. Um, before we get there, let me just tell you that you know the, the range of activities, the smorgasbord, I would call it, of activities that he's involved in, it's, it's huge. He addresses life from a number of various platforms, from various perspectives. Uh, we want to talk, continue the discussion we have about, well, you know, he was a, a former a member of, well, he was a member of the Trinidad and Tobago Police Service back some time ago. He's been, I would say, around the world uh, and back. He's operating from Trinidad and Tobago again. We were talking about crime in a particular context, and he's been talking about uh, uh, the, the, the crime of human trafficking. And that's where we want to get to it. We, just before we came on there, he was telling me about um, just being appointed as an ambassador for the Caribbean region for the, uh, you, you say it? The um, African Diaspora Union. The African Diaspora Short Union. Short name Afrodo. Right, and that's based in, in, that's based in South, South Africa. Africa. Yes. And, and it's, it's to do. It's, it's to do, it's kind of as a non-profit organization, kind of civil society organization. And we, we deal with some political issues and we here in Trinidad and Tobago, partnering with the same company, the Bijou company that we talked about last, last time, yeah. in rolling out some programs. One of them is the human trafficking issue, the domestic violence issue. We want to encourage trade, we want to encourage cultural programs and exchange programs between the countries. And talk about this whole aspect about, you know, people trying to get back to Africa, investment in Africa. We want to encourage some people to, to, to have some conversations with that. So there's a whole network of getting to know me, getting to know them, getting to know who's interested in that type of conversation. Yeah, well. So it's, it's based in, in, in South Africa, imagine, in, in Cape Town or in, in... Yes, Johannesburg. Yeah, mm -hmm. but it would involve uh, other countries who, who are looking this way. I mean, so the, the, the Prime Minister and a minister who is not a minister anymore went to Ghana some time ago. Right, yeah. So all of that, that that's happening within there is, is part of our conversation with the, the, the AU, which is the the umbrella organization, the African Union. We fall under that African Union as an organization that, that is talking in the interests of Africa and getting the Caribbean people who has a history and a connection with Ghana and all these different places. We are part of that conversation and it's a very deep and broad conversation and it's, it's just a lot to talk about in, in a short time. So it's, it's a matter of time to time um, as we get connected and, and keep coming back on TV and stuff like that, um, communicate the, the whole purpose of why we exist and the and mission and vision of Africa. Right, because it sometimes, just in so, on some points, it happens in the stops and starts. Because um, when the, the last um, Nigerian president was in Trinidad for emancipation, the celebrations, it was under the prime ministership of, of the late Patrick Manning. Mm -hmm. And there was a, a public servant working in the Ministry of external affairs or foreign affairs at the time, what it was called. Uh, and he told me that, um, well, so they, one of the things that, that was going to happen then was the signing of, a, of an ag agreement concerning joint air services so that you could get flights, you know, between, between these two countries, Nigeria yes. and, and, and yes. Trinidad yes. and Tobago. Uh, and he said that, so that was on the agenda for Mr. President Obasanjo to sign. But that there was one that preceded that, so that, to the best of my understanding, we have two joint services air agreements between Trinidad and Tobago and, and Nigeria, none of which has come to fruition yet. The Prime Minister, when he went to Ghana, you know, in this term here, signed one of those things with, with the Ghanaian government. The question is, when would we see action on, on, on these things as a start? So that, that again, we don't know what, don't will, know what, what will happen e there. Everything, everything is a process. Um, even Barbados is involved in the conversation right now, trying to get um, flights out of Barbados in a different direction. Because what they're trying to do now, when, when you look at the map, your flight from Barbados to, to Africa, um, I can't remember exactly which, which one of the, um, which country it is. It takes three and a half hours. And the question is, why have we been going all around the world? You have to go to New York or to, to London. <laughs> and and all these places to yeah. get to Africa when there's a simple flight within the Caribbean, three and a half, four hours to get it. So that's the discussion right now coming out of Barbados. That's the discussion coming out as how can we get our own flights, maybe Caribbean Airlines or whoever it is, to begin um, getting to Africa on a shorter journey and a faster journey instead of having to make all these trips all yeah. around the world to get to the same yeah. point. And in fact, there, there was a group of Trinidad and Tobago nationals working on that to get direct flights from, from Trinidad to, to Ghana. Uh, and so we don't know what has happened with that 
since the government has intervened right. and, and trying to do it as yeah. a government to government basis. But I just, I just put that out there to Long see that. Long process, a yeah. lot, of, lot of things have to, to, to come so in. There have been these to, aspirations to, yeah. for some time and so on. Yeah. We want to get to the point that we continue the discussion about um, you know, the, what, what does human trafficking look like in Trinidad and Tobago. We're talking about it, but mm -hmm. people don't have a, a good sense of, of what it means, what the realities are. And I think as when we broke up the last time, I was asking whether we know any case in which somebody who was trafficked from Trinidad and Tobago was found and brought back. Yeah. Definitely, they were, they were found in Trinidad and Tobago. You know, the thing about it is that I don't know if, if in the the framework and th that deals with human trafficking in Trinidad and Tobago, I don't know if the job of coming out in the public and making the public know what is actually happening within within counter trafficking or whatever it is, if there needs to be more PR work. I know they, love, they do a lot of educational work as to let the media know what is happening, who's been arrested, who has been charged, you know, who's pending, who are the victims. Some, a lot of times you wouldn't see the victim because it, it takes a lot for a victim to show themselves, to show their face. Right. Um, and sometimes they're targeted. In some cases, you know, they're scared to, to, um, to come publicly because their life is under threat. Because, you know, you're putting somebody in the public domain as, as a, a trafficker, as somebody who has exploited you, and that person has, is surrounded with a, a certain type of people around them. And I've known girls who even stayed in somebody's homes, which I cannot disclose where those homes are, in somebody halfway homes in Trinidad and Tobago, who's actually run away for fear, even at their home, run away and, 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 and try to find... To be, they didn't feel safe in, feel in a safe not house? In a safe house, they didn't feel safe, ran away. And there have been people who, who came back to Trinidad, having been trafficked out of Trinidad, because that's what I'm trying to get at. No, those, those are people who were trafficked into Trinidad. Mm -hmm. And a court case is pending. Yeah, so, they, so they're in a safe house. In a safe house. While the matter is while being, the is being did. And didn't, feel, didn't, didn't feel safe and in the left there. And left. Yeah. Okay. It's as bad as that. This is bad. Well, well, there's a number of things that happens yeah. in, in, in places like that. Is, is, you know, you have to investigate why. Why they left. Is it one of the things I know they were having in some of these safe houses was a culture problem. The culture of food, the culture of language. Language was a problem. You're talking about people who may be speaking Spanish and, and not understanding what you're saying and what I'm saying. Um, the type of food, I know one of the problems was the, the kind of food that, that was being, the Trini, so people from Trini food, they were not accustomed to it. Those, those issues were a problem. And um, some of them, in some cases, when, when, when a woman is, and a young woman gets into that situation, depending on how long she stays in that situation, her body becomes pro um, programmed to a certain lifestyle. And it's one thing you, you know, the, the, the whole sexual aspect of it. So you, you find that the trauma she's been through, the, the, the sexual, the, the amount of time she's been raped, um, and all of that. I have known instances, even within the United States, that when you catch these girls, they, they would not arrest them they used to arrest them as just plain prostitutes, and they found out, no, this is not because people were So if people become emotionally and, and psychologically numb? Yes, uh -huh. they become numb. Some of them actually become in love with the, with the, yeah, uh, yeah, they, they, yeah, <laughs> yeah, the yeah. perpetrators. And they miss them. even though they, they don't like the treatment, some of them try to run away to go back to that. Because and even in the, in, the, in, the, in the halfway homes, what we found in some of the halfway homes, and I'm not talking about here, in some of the halfway homes that we dealt with in the United States, you have, you, you take them into a, a home with a bunch of girls, and what you find is that now they're in the home, their bodies are calling for a certain type of activity, yeah. and they now start hitting on the girls, hitting on the girls within the compound. Mm -hmm. And that, that's a whole other scenario. So that's a version yeah. of what they call the Stockholm syndrome, which you you be, you, you you get to like your your your, yes. your kidnapper or your the person who has you under duress. That's right. <laughs> it's about power and control, and when we talk about power and control, we're talking about power and control not only in the instance of when you're in front of them or when they have you. We're talking about power and control. Your body, your mind, your everything is messed up. You're not yourself because you've been trauma. You have to go through psychological treatments and all kind of stuff because. For you to come back into society, I mean, remember, you remember you don't trust anybody anymore. This is a young woman, 
and, and, and some of them got captured, the average, average age is from 14 years old. So you get captured in that kind of situation and last for a certain amount of time. After a while, you know, the trauma um, of the rape, um, I want to keep saying the word, the trauma of the rape um, over and over and over um, could so get to you. What happens in, in those cases where, well, if people just vanish, they just vanish, and nobody goes after them or anything like that to try and... People try. I, I've, I've known families here in Trinidad and Tobago who've tried, and, and they still haven't given up, you know, 20 years down the road. They, they don't know if it's a human trafficking issue. They don't know if they died. They don't know if they, you know, you know, one guy I know, he, his wife just disappeared one night. And up to this day, he's never seen her. Um, they had a never son. Heard from never her. heard from her. You don't know if it's trafficking. You don't know. I think the last place they, they saw her phone, which is many, many years ago, somewhere in St. Anne's. Where? In St. Anne's. And that, that was it. She vanished. And up, up to now, this man can't put closure to the fact that where's his wife? I mean, what are you going to put on the city gate? She's dead? You don't know. <laughs> and you can't identify it to say what is human trafficking. She probably might have just left him. You never know. Yeah. But that investigation keeps dancing, dancing, dancing. The family, the brothers, the sisters, nobody knows up to this day. But, but you, you're, not, you're not aware to what extent people who are trafficked outside of Trinidad will get to come back. No. That, that's, that's a very difficult that's kind a of difficult situation. situation. That's a difficult situation. Um, I don't have any proof of people who are trafficked out of Trinidad and Tobago coming back here. Um, what I do know from the stats I have, if, if a woman lasts in a human trafficking scenario seven years, and with the amount of time she's raped per day, um, she's more than likely, I'm just painting a statistic um, scenario for you, she's more than likely to be dead after seven years. Why is that? You just can't last. <laughs> you so just can't mentally last. and psychologically and so on. Yeah. You. you just can't last. Seven years, if you're in a situation like that for seven years, more than likely, you would not be alive. You'd want to die. You you you, you, well, you, some you, people. You would some use people, the will to live. Some people will get to that point. Some people get to the point where you know they get numb. They just life doesn't mean anything anymore. But I die because um, I can't even imagine what it feels like or looks like to be in a situation and held against your will. Um, your life is probably threatened over and over, men taking advantage of you. Yeah. So that's, you know, that's what I mean. You, 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 you give up. Yeah, After you, a while, you, you lose the will you lose, you to, to live. And, and seven years yes. is, is a period over which, if you're in that without any hope of, of escaping, that's what happens. You, just, you, just, uh, uh, you are just something <laughs> that makes money for somebody else. Yeah. How, how effective would you say, how would you grade the here's the thing, the still more the counter trafficking units in the Trinidad and Police Service. How do you rate them? How do you grade them? In terms of what they deliver? I, I would give them a pass grade, but I think a whole lot more can be done. It all depends on how much government want to, to feed that machine financially, because it takes a whole lot of finances. I, I, I believe that um, from what I've seen, um, that unit is understaffed. I personally believe it's understaffed. And with every, every part of the service is it's understaffed. understaffed. <laughs> um, and I think that is underfinanced. Um, it's, not an, uh, it's an arm of government that, um, and I can't speak for them, I'm telling what, I'm, what I um, yeah. have observed from, right. from dealing with them. It's, it's not like an NGO where they could go out and ask for funds from a business person or whatever it is to, to help us with this project and all that. Um, I don't know if they can for that, I don't think, because they're a government agency. Yeah. Maybe they can receive funds from, maybe, I don't know, maybe they could, in their policies they could receive funds from if somebody have some money on their load and say, look, I would like to donate something to help. Maybe they might be, but they yeah, can't do that. But Defense I think they where? need financing, they yeah. need more people involved, and they need more PR work. They need to let the public know because the public is is the public is is um, it feels like it's either it's gone away like last time we talked about 
is it, it still exists in Trinidad and is, is very quiet right now. The truth of the matter is hidden in plain sight. So it's there. It's not something that these guys make public. The only time you hear it is when a radius is successfully made and something is put in the news. After that, what happens? You hear you, you take, let's say if we take the last two, three years, it's, 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 it's gotten worse than it, is, than it was? Trafficking? Yeah. Of course. Yeah. The, the more, one, like I said, the more the economy contracts, the more people are out of jobs, and, and the more people cannot meet or live by certain standards, like in the last conversation we were having prior to me coming on here. The more that happens, the more people become vulnerable. Right. Now, again, we just start talking. We have to just to, to adjourn it again for the time where we will keep um, from time to time. Oh, most definitely, most issue. definitely. This, this gets deeper and deeper. All the time, okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, lovely Clarence Green, thank you very much. We will take a break. When we come back, Mr. Brian Big on this, this issue about the Privy Council, about what he complains, what he, what he contends has been the PNM's attacks on Trinidad and the Bay with citizens of Indian origins. Stay with us.